everyone, and welcome back to the show of Tea with b and I'm your host, Laura. It's been quite a while since we had a video, but there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world, so I hope everybody is doing safe and sound. But no matter, we will continue. This show, we discuss topics related to heavy industry, heavy manufacturing, and my personal favorite pairings of tasty teas and delectable delights. So grab yourself something hot and let's get started. So what do I like more than industrial topics? Well, golly, I love me some cake. Red velvet is my all time favorite. And since red velvet is technically chocolate cake, I thought it would be delicious to pair with a tangerine orange tea, which as the name sounds, has zests of tangerine orange and whispers of passion fruit and hibiscus. Orange and chocolate, really fabulous combo. All right. So what is a bearing, Laura? A bearing is used to eliminate friction. Friction occurs when you have two items that are in contact with each other, spinning or rubbing really, really hard, and that creates Friction. Friction creates heat, which creates wear, which is bad. Bad. If these look unfamiliar to you, bearings are actually in a lot of places. You can find them on bicycles, lawn mowers, cake mixers, skateboards, and the notorious fidget spinner. For those of y'all who have one, throw that thing away. So why do we use bearings? Well, bearings are used to minimize friction, support the load, and restrict motion in the majority of the cases. A bearing is made out of hardened steel. It has a inner race, it has an outer race, and what makes a bearing a bearing are the elements that rotate with inside. These elements have to be evenly spaced to carry a load evenly. So what do you use? You use a separator or what is normally referred to as a cage. There are many different bearings. There are many different sizes. It all depends on how much axial and radial forces that you have in your application. So what is radial and axial? If you remember from our gearbox video, axial loads are parallel to the shaft while radial loads are perpendicular to the shaft. So depending on how much motion is going on and how much thrust and loads is gonna determine which bearing you need. So let's start with the basics. This is a very plain bearing. The material of this bearing is an oil impregnated bronze. Why? Because when this thing heats up, the oil seeps out from the pores of this material. So this is an old style bearing. This is old technology. You don't really use this anymore. The next type of bearing we're going to discuss is what's called a roller bearing. And why do we call it a roller bearing? Because the rolling elements are balls. Isn't that cool? So a ball bearing uses round balls. These have single point contacts. Ball bearings are excellent for high speed. This is a cage with teeny little rolling elements. This is for smaller spaces, more compact, but can spin really, really fast. The next bearing we're gonna talk about is a cylindrical roller bearing. And as the name implies, the rolling elements on a cylindrical roller bearing are flat, straight rollers. These kind of bearings are made particularly for applications of very high radial load. And that means a lot of load upon the bearing. Now, if you have any kind of load or movement within it, axial, you're gonna have a problem because as you can see, this comes out, which means that cylindrical roller bearings cannot take any kind of axial thrust. Radial, yes. Axial, no. Next bearing we're gonna discuss is a tapered roller bearing. So when I remove the inner race from the outer race, you can see that it's conical shaped. This bad boy can carry a lot of load. It can carry a lot of load radially, and it can carry a lot of load actually, but only in one direction. Because see, if I push it in this way, you have a lot of load that can be carried. But if you push it out the other way, whoopsies. The last bearing that we're gonna discuss today is what's called a spherical roller bearing. And this is a very prominent bearing in the paper industry. Why? Because it can take a lot of load and it allows for misalignment. This bearing, as you can see, has two rows of rolling elements. So that means you can have double what you would with just one row of rolling elements. And you can see that this inner race pivots and that's great because it accommodates misalignment. 
in any kind of manufacturing, nothing is gonna be 100% aligned. The machine is moving constantly. Nothing is gonna ever be perfect. So this is perfect for imperfection. So in this next part of this video, I'm going to show you contact pattern of these rolling elements to explain why they're used in their particular bearings. Here are the different bearing elements of the four bearings we've discussed. Let's start with the ball bearing. I'm gonna dip it in some paint. And boom, you can see that the element has point contact. Let's take a look at the pattern of the smaller cage. Although the load carrying capability is dispersed over a small area, the speed of the rotating element can be much greater in ball bearings than the other types of rolling elements we have here. Let's move on to the cylindrical roller element. The cylindrical rolling element has what we refer to as line contact. This is designed for high radio load concentration and is limited in speed. As I said earlier, this cannot handle axial load due to the design of the supporting races. These types of bearings are normally utilized in combo with other fixed or held position bearings. Next is the tapered roller bearing. You can see here that this element produces line contact. This design allows the bearing to accept high radial loads and axial loads in only one direction. Initial observation of the element is that one end is larger than the other, hence the term tapered. The last element is the spherical element. The shape of this roller is a sphere, which allows semi-line contact with self-aligning capability between the races. This is designed for excessive radial load. Normally, the axial forces that these bearings can accommodate is one third of the radial force generated. Due to the self-aligning capabilities of this bearing, the supporting shafts do not have to be parallel to the mounting structure. Well folks, thanks for tuning in and having a little tea time with me today, and I hope you got basic fundamentals of anti-friction bearings. Remember, bearings are used to increase the efficiency of rotating machines by using less horsepower and by utilizing the different configurations of the rolling elements. Our folks at B&D are bearing experts. We know what kind of bearing your application needs, and we also have the support of the manufacturers. So if you have a bearing question or a bearing issue, feel free to call us because we're here to help with your reliability. Tune into the second video on bearings. I'm your host, Laura, and I hope you have a great day.